changes coming for Metro like any of the other agencies here in the DC area or around the country. Metro is facing some major decisions. So we want to bring in Metro GM Paul Wiedefeld. Uh, Paul, the last time we spoke, uh, it was back in February. Everybody was wondering what's going to happen. Are we going to see fewer tourists for the Cherry Blossom Festival? Obviously, the world has changed. Metro has changed. And now you face some of your toughest choices yet. Going forward, I want to talk about the public and what is on their mind. People coming back to Metro, coming back to uh, full buses, full trains. What do you see in the next six months to a year? Are people going to come back? And how do we practice social distancing? Yeah. Good morning, Sam. Um, yeah, obviously it's going to be a challenge for all of us, but uh, we do we do anticipate people coming back, particularly in the probably the August September time frame. Uh, we basically have put out a recovery plan where we are in a stabilization stage right now. We then will have a managed re-entry stage in the fall, and then a full recovery. We believe uh, after the uh, in the new year into the spring of next year. All this affects everybody ridership, whether you ride Metro and you're worried about being safe uh, near people or you only use a car and the roads now have more traffic on it. But how do you get people to feel safe coming back to trains? Well, we're, what we're going to do is basically we are requiring everyone to wear a mask. We will provide capacity so people can keep social distancing. As you know, the numbers are way down. We're 95 percent lower than where we were last year. So again, there's very few people in the system. As the region starts to open up, we will increase capacity to deal with that, to, tr to try to maintain social distancing. But we've got to ask um, help from everyone. We have to ask help from the businesses to stagger their work hours, to improve or to uh, continue to telecommute, to again, not have that surge that we normally have in the morning. And then also we need people to, uh, you know, be considerate of everyone else, to wear masks, to keep the distances sure. that they, that they sure. do certainly important to stagger those times. We are not going back to what we had in 2019. You guys are projecting a $438 million um, budget shortfall from ridership numbers, uh, which was to be expected. You're receiving hundreds of millions of dollars from the federal government. But right now, you really aren't planning any furloughs or layoffs. Will you cut back on hours because of the reduced service to save money? Um, we are. We actually are saving some money, obviously, on the energy side, particularly fuel and, and electricity. But as you can imagine, our expenses are going up. Uh, we are doing tremendous uh, a level of cleaning now. The materials, the um, the gloves and the masks and things that we need for our people. So it is a tough financial situation. I want to thank the congressional delegation. They have given us, as you mentioned, literally hundreds of millions of dollars to deal with this issue in the short term. Uh, long term, you know, we're all thinking, you know, what happens next? Um, so we'll continue to work that with our delegation and with local jurisdictions. Paul, you've got a summer shutdown coming up. It's a lot different than what we were uh, seeing last year. We were focused on buses and shuttles and making sure they were driving to the right places and picking up all the passengers. How are the challenges different this year around and what's going to be the biggest impact in your concern? Sure. Well, again, the, the, the good news is obviously that when we do the shuttles, they're, they're again the volumes that we would have uh, like last summer. Um, but they ha we have to do social distancing bit in effect during the construction. So that's different. Um, the materials, the, the supply chain is an issue. But, you know, the, you know we, we have to continue on. And uh, I, gotta, I, I have to thank our employees. They've been doing a fantastic job. Our first concern is keeping them safe, keeping them healthy. Uh, but they continue to meet the needs of the essential workers and the essential people that need to move for whatever their needs are, whether it's food or, or medicine. So we do we, we have to do our work as best we can, but we also have to keep everyone safe at the same time. Metro GM Paul Wiedefeld. Paul, thanks for getting up uh, early with us. We appreciate it. And as a reminder, masks will be required starting on Monday. Robert. All right.